I'd like to say something about the art of divination and how you can use divination using the conscious communication card set of which the values deck and the conversation type deck is what I'm going to talk about here. And divination is something which most people might attribute to looking at tea leaves or reading someone's palm or having some sort of uh, methodology like throwing the bones or reading the stars maybe that you're trying to get answers from what seems to be chaos. You're trying to ask the universe to send you a sign, to send you a message because you don't know how to do find the answer yourself. And so there's a, a tarot deck, which is probably the best known divination card deck, which has been around for at least 500 years. And the tarot deck created a whole uh, arena of other oracle decks where now there's probably hundreds of different decks, which are all different. Uh, they come from different worldviews. They have different art, uh, but they, they all sort of have a set of words that you use in terms of answering questions. And so you will sort of have the question in mind and you, you go to someone or you're using the cards yourself and then you get a reading and the reading can fall on, on a, a structure. So the structure gives meaning to the cards above it. So if you have, let's say, the, a time structure and three cards and you have the past, the present and the future, those three spaces give meaning to the cards that are placed in each of the spaces. So if you want to look at your question from the past point of view, uh, you're going to get this card. And if you're going to look at it from the present point of view, you're going to get this card. And if you're going to look at it from the future point of view, you're going to get this card. So a lot of people think about divination <clears throat> in terms of card sets in this way. And I'd probably say that I think women are a lot more interested in it than men. They seem to be a lot more open and wanting to find answers in different ways Men seem to be, I think they like it too, but a lot of times they want to be more logical in their decisions and they want to sort, sort of assess the information in a way that makes sense to them rather than just some random drawing of, of cards. And so everyone out there has a, a different, let's say, uh, sense of credibility with divination. But if we look through history and we look at all the different uh, cultures that have grown up in this world, probably all of them have a, 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 a sort of a, a spiritual side that uses divination in some manner to gather answers in a methodology that is not quite, let's say, scientific or completely understandable. There's a mystery to it. And so what I found in working with card sets and game boards and maps as the tools that I was creating was it created a, uh, uh, a sort of the, the right tools were coming together to use divination as a methodology to find things out. And so in the conscious communication card deck, there are six decks and two of them are here right now. And I'd like to sort of speak about this particular combination in terms of uh, there are so many different possible combinations with six decks. And so you have to look at the smaller combinations first to understand perhaps how all the decks are going to fit together because most Oracle decks have one deck. So something unique about the conscious communication card set is there are six decks. And by playing with them together, you get different combinations for your divinations. And so the idea that the values deck and the combo type deck is kind of like at the center point. It is like the first combination to look at because of all of the different combinations when looking at conscious communication, choosing the conversation type that you are in or want to be in and choosing the value of either what you want or you are heading for is at the essence of choosing conscious communication. It's leaving the unconscious world that we all inhabit in most of our social conversation and entering into a world where things are more conscious, but there's an aspect of divination 
which is changes the nature of the conscious communication to add in the mystery of the divine. Okay, I'll give you an example. So let's say you're just questioning a few things in your life and you, and you go, okay, well, how, how can I better improve my communication in my business life? And so you, I have the, the card decks in front. And so I, I choose a value card and I get diversity to value being diverse, differentiated and what the heck, I can't even read it. Difference and unlikeness, okay? And then visioning. To build and empower a vision in the ether by continually speaking what it is. So diversity and visioning. What that says to me is I need a, a broader approach to when I'm either talking about the vision which I'm putting forth or listening to someone else's visioning. Uh, need to take into account a lot more than I currently am, take into more voices, more inclusiveness, uh, find a way to really bring the diversity in because we're trying to create unity and unity and diversity are sort of different poles of the opposites. But when you can have both of them, it's a very powerful uh, combination. And that's like bridging the opposites. There's always going to be a polarity. There's always going to be a duality. So how do we find, you know, the complementary nature of it rather than the disconnecting nature of it? And then that sort of goes into a trinity, which is the bridging of the, of the opposites, which in a lot of spiritual disciplines is at the key of what we have to do here on this physical plane. And so here we have diversity and visioning as the combination. And the question was, you know, how can I uh, better improve my business communication? So that's one methodology of just sort of asking a question and getting an answer. And so that just has me approach all my business communication, perhaps in, in a different way. And so let's ask another question. It could be, okay, how could I uh, be more loving to my partner uh, in the moment? And so I get the focus to value to val to value bring to a focus an idea or activity logistical the planning implementation and coordination of resources for an activity logistical the planning implementation and coordination of resources for an activity so what we have is focus on logistical now, with the question, how can I bring more love to my partner? You might think something maybe more romantic than that. But I'd say logistical, it's probably a weakness of mine and a strength of hers. And so uh, if I focus more on the logistical aspect of things and took care of business better rather than being some, you know, uh, inventor type who's always in the abstract, uh, she would feel more loved because I was taking care of what I need to take care of. <laughs> see what I mean? Like I ask a question and I get an answer. And if I'm true to myself and I'm honest and I sort of think about it, it's not something I would choose. I wouldn't go. I want to focus on the logistical conversation to bring more love to, to this relationship. It was <clears throat> random. And so it's not really being forced upon me. And it's just giving me a new perspective. It's given me uh, something to look at that I would not choose myself but then in the act of looking at it, you sort of have that change of mind. You have to shift of perspective. And that's what these lenses and conversations are all about. It's just like get outside of your normal way of doing something and try something new. And it's not like you have someone, you know, sort of criticizing you or saying, you know, shut up and do this or, or that type of feedback, which we're used to in many ways. So we shut down to sort of feedback. We, we don't take into account what we need to. So this is a, like a, a new methodology of getting feedback, which is very simple. And it's just, you can ask it any question and you're gonna get an answer. But you know the questions are more linked into communication, which is I think at the heart of connection between human beings. So whether in business or in romance or just amongst your friends, um, being a good communicator can always be something that can be approved. And so by having these two decks, it gives you, uh, 
thousands, almost hundreds of thousands of different ways of approaching people and changing your communication and perhaps uh, helping others to change theirs. So that's just, uh, uh, I, I just wanted to give a, <clears throat> an explanation about the divination side to this because it's, it's a very big side to this. There's so many different things you can do with the cards. You can design programs, you can write scripts, you could write a book, you could change your business communication. But at the heart of it is the simple process of asking a question and taking a quick look and then going, hmm, what does that mean? And so uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>